These are the Shetland Islands, a unique collection of islands nestled far north of the United Kingdom. Geographically closer to Norway than they are to Edinburgh, these islands are teeming with wildlife, history and unique experiences that will stay with you for a lifetime. From bright white beaches to its famously small horses, to epic coastline for its Neolithic ruins and Viking settlements, if you're looking for an adventure, then look no further than Shetland. If you're new around here, we're Jack and Joe, that's our scruffy hitchhiker Frank, and this is Big P, a home on wheels that has taken us to wild places all over the UK and Europe. If you like the sound of this adventure, then come along with us on these wild journeys through the Shetland Islands. We began our journey to Shetland with an overnight ferry from the port of Aberdeen. Many people say that the adventure begins with the scenes from the North Link Ferry itself, and the views didn't disappoint, but the ominous weather hinted that this might not be the smoothest of crossings. So we've just passed the final kind of top bit of Scotland as we come up from Aberdeen on the boat. It's raining, the wind's picking up, we're the only people on the top deck but this is gonna be a proper adventure. We're really excited about it. It's about quarter past nine. So I don't think we're gonna see a sunset, but we'll catch you tomorrow morning for our first day in Scotland. First day in Shetland, sorry. <laughs> it feels like it's gonna be epic, doesn't it? Like proper feels like it's gonna be awesome. After a restless night's sleep and what was an allegedly smooth crossing, we woke early to watch the signs of land. After a few hours, we landed on a grey day in Shetland. We took a quick nap on the side of a viewpoint, jumped into Tesco's to stock up for the week, before we began our drive north. We're currently on, what's the island called that we're on, Joe? Yo! <laughs> we're currently on an island called Yo. Shetland's made, I think, made up of I think like a hundred or so islands. So you have to get a ferry in between the main ones. So we've gone from the mainland to Yo. <laughs> and now we have to wait for another ferry to go to. Unst, 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 but I think unst. they call it I think they call it unst or unst. <laughs> I don't actually know what that guy said, but yeah, I think it's thirty-five quid for all of the ferries in one day. Um, and it gets more and more remote as we've kind of driven through from the mainland onto Yale. The island of Unst is known as a key island in Shetland's rich Viking history. Throughout the island there are more than 60 ruins of Viking longhouses. And our first stop in this road trip was to the recreated Viking longhouse and Viking longboat in Howardswick at the Unst Viking Project. It's here that historians say was one of the first places the Vikings landed in Shetland as they sought a safe haven on their trading route between Norway and the upper islands of Iceland, Greenland and Newfoundland. After getting our history fix, we visited our first beach of the trip. First Shetland beach throw. <laughs> Beautiful little beach. But I think the rain's coming in. So I think we want to find our park up for the night. What do you think of the spot, Frank? Looks quite good, doesn't it?
So we came back from the beach and we found a really nice kind of like cliff top park up that we have basically uh, fallen asleep to because we were up since half five on that boat and I think it's actually taken quite a lot out of us. But now we're bird watching and Joe is trying to identify a bird that we've seen from the window. I reckon it's a bunting. Uh, yeah, okay. As far as I've got, unfortunately. Well, I've got a few. There's a pretty epic um, spot to see some bird watching. Just kind of watch the world go by this evening. Tomorrow the weather's looking good, fingers crossed. And we're right by the start of the walk that we want to do tomorrow morning. So probably leave you here unless we see something amazing out the window. just taking a short walk and all of a sudden the cliffs just appear and it's amazing like look at this Hermanus National Nature Reserve is one of Shetland's wildest spots with its dramatic cliffs home to swooping gannets, kittiwakes, fulmars and more gonna run out of adjectives for this but this is just incredible like I've just sat and watched a puffin for like five minutes just kind of like bumbling about his day it's just amazing it's like you came over that lip towards the coast and just life just kind of like burst into action it's amazing that smile on my face got even bigger as we carried on our walk and bumped into a circus of puffins. So that there is Muckle Flogger Lighthouse. The rock just beyond it is the most northerly point of Great Britain. Beyond that is just the North Pole. And apparently in the winter the storms and the waves kind of reach the top of the lighthouse which is 60 metres up, so yeah, it'd be harsh landscape up here in the winter. Thankfully, by the time we'd gotten back from Herman S. Cliffs, the wind had cleared and the skies had blued up we headed back on the road to find our spot for the night. It is a beautiful blue day today. The hike up to that viewpoint and Oh, it was just amazing. We've gone a little bit further down, not too far, maybe like 10 minutes um, back down the island. And we've actually stopped where we were yesterday by the Viking boat. We've got a pretty spectacular view from our window. We also pulled in at the distillery and picked up some tasty looking gins there. And Joe's on off to watch, aren't you, Joe? Otters don't exist. But Joe doesn't think otters exist. I've never seen one in, in the wild, apart from maybe once. We did, we saw one in Barra. Maybe. Apparently, and most places we go to, they always say this, this is the best place to go to to find otters. Not this exact spot. Not this exact spot, but this area. The Sound of Bolter. The Sound of, Bol sound of, of Bolter, which is close to where we are is a good spot to see otters. I mean, either way, there's some awesome looking bird life out here. 
and it's just a lovely little view from our window. Something. I think this is exactly what we expected from Shetland and why we booked it. I think we're pining for like more wildlife in our life and today has been an overload of wildlife in a really really good way. It's been amazing. Looking forward to the next few days really. What more will we see from, from the comfort of our lovely living room? And what more will we see on some more adventurous hikes? Let's see. Good morning, a bit of a slow drizzly day today, but it finally happened. We finally saw an otter. We were sitting, eating our breakfast, tucking into some porridge, and then all of a sudden, we just saw this otter-like shape bobbing along, the, bobbing along the bay that we're parked by. And it was 100% an otter, got about one second on the camera, but now Jo thinks, Jo can confirm that she now believes in otters. But yeah, it was amazing. This little park up is beautiful. So nice to see all the bird life. Seals just bobbing, around, bobbing along in the bay. We're gonna head back down south along the car ferries, back to the Shetland mainland to explore more of that island. We woke up the next day to a beautiful, crisp, blue morning at St Ninian's Beach. We set off for a walk across the sands to the ruins of St Ninian's Church. St Ninian's is connected to the mainland of Shetland via Tombolo, which is this sandbank here. With crashing waves either side of us, we grabbed Frank's ball and let him lead the chase over to the island where an ancient Pictish chapel once lived. Beautifully blue day today. Like chalk and cheese compared to yesterday where it's cloudy and really 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 windy it's a bit of warmth today as well which is quite nice So the chapel isn't intact, but it's a really nice walk over here. Apparently it's been here since the 1200s or maybe even earlier. Um, and a schoolboy in 1951 or 1961, I can't remember what the board said, found like a whole big treasure trove of Pictish, which I think is like old Scots people, like treasure. And there's loads of like bronze artifacts. Imagine just finding that, going for a casual beach rock walk up to this island, just going, ah, what's this? and just finding like probably a million pounds worth of treasure from hundreds of years ago. Can't put a price on that. Can't put a price on that. But it's very peaceful over here. We're just currently sitting on the bench. We've essentially done a lovely walk. We've been sitting in our van looking over here and now we've found a bench and we're looking back towards our van across the beach. Beautiful. That sounded more poetic at the time. After enjoying a morning of sunshine and warmth by St Ninians, we headed off from the car park on our way to explore some more of Shetland's ancient history.
driving over a runway. Oh, wow. Joe, just quickly check for any planes coming through. Oh my god. Any planes coming through? There's a car on the runway. There's a what? It's a car on the runway. Jesus. That's crazy. Well, I never thought I'd drive over an airport runway in the van, but yeah. here we are. Jarlshof is a treasure trove of Shetland history. The site was discovered after a storm in the late 19th century washed away part of the shore, revealing evidence of 4,000 years of settlement in this part of Shetland. Since then, archaeological digs have revealed stone houses and relics from 2000 BC. Pictish Bronze Age settlers then built their stone brock on top in the late BC and early AD centuries, before the Vikings then built a longhouse and lived here between 900 AD to the 1400s. Following that period, the Scots then built the old Sunbur house in the 16th century. This was truly a fascinating place, which gave us the privilege to literally step through thousands of years of history. That was awesome. You get a little audio guide um, that you walk around with and you have little points to do it and it's just yeah it's, it's amazing that you get to walk around and just see 4,000 years of settlement it's a beautiful day today as well which I think has helped to kind of like bring it back bring it to life um, and as we were leaving someone said that it was better than Scarra Bray in Orkney which we're going to be seeing next week so we'll have to see but yeah that was just wicked and now we've managed to find some hot chocolate for sale and we've got a view of this. And there's a little Shetland pony out there. I was wondering why I had a sore throat. Why, Jack? Because I'm looking a little horse. That doesn't make sense, does it? Damn! Damn! They've yeah, got a beautiful view out towards the sea, a tiny Shetland pony. This is a very Shetland, Shetland scene. A prehistoric settlement, the ocean, some islands, a lighthouse and a Shetland pony. Amazing. Shockingly bad jokes aside, we cooked up some food, had a closer look at these little ponies before we drove two minutes further up the coast to Sunburhead. Sumberhead is the most southerly point of Shetland mainland and it's a haven for bird life, being an RSPB reserve. And on a clear day like this affords you incredible views back up north along the Shetland coast, as well as down towards the crashing waves where seabirds clamber and chatter among each other. On a lucky day from Sunburhead, you can also spot orcas, but today we weren't in luck. So we've come just a little bit further down the road, down from Summerhead, we're on West Vaux Beach. Look at it, it's beautiful. When we drove past it earlier, the car park was full, um, but I suppose everyone's gone, gone home. So we've got it to ourselves. Seems like we might be able to spend the night here. The internet is very fast, which is good because we've got work tomorrow. So we'll sign off and we'll see you, still on the same video, but through the power of video editing, in three days where we'll be doing some more amazing just we've got like two more days two more full travel days left in Shetland so we're going to be and we've got some really cool sh stuff planned like the past four days have been amazing but we've got two more things two more days to make the most of our time here and the weather's looking impeccable a bit like this how lucky are we Joe's just taking a picture of the of the clear waters that we're by I think this beach is one of the wards. But yeah, catch you.
in a little while. After a fairly seamless few days of work in Shetland, you join us back at the van three days later on a windy Wednesday evening, set to embark on an experience that is unique to Shetland. Meeting with our tour guides, a friendly father and son team, we boarded a small ferry boat bound for the island of Musa. After a quick but chilly crossing on the passenger ferry, we docked on the island. With the wind beginning to howl, we followed our guides along a short footpath past sleeping sheep to the Brock of Musa. The Brock of Musa is a 3,000 year old structure built by hand with stone tools reaching the height of a modern three-story building. We entered the Brock with a small amount of torchlight and while we waited we made the most of this opportunity to explore this ancient ruin. Walking the finely carved steps to the top for a view back towards the mainland. By now we were frozen by the harsh winds, but anticipation and excitement was also high in the small group we were with. Soon, small black shapes began darting across the twilight skies. Storm petrels used the simmer dim light, that's the summer dusk to non-Shetlanders, to navigate back to the shore safely, away from the eyes of predators. They spend the majority of their life out at sea, but return to land to breed and lay a single egg. Musa Island is home to 11,000 breeding pairs and the Brock itself provides a roost for 400. This is a unique experience to Shetland and one we won't forget. As we watched the birds seek a gap in the walls to roost, we began hearing the chirping noise of the birds which has been affectionately likened to fairies being sick. For our last full day on Shetland, we headed up to the northwestern part of the Shetland mainland towards Eastern Cliffs. Despite the weather forecast promising good weather, it turns out we were going to be in for a bit of a shock. So we rocked up at the lighthouse and the views are epic. I think we're going to have a hot drink and then we're going to go for the coastal walk that's near here. The wind is howling though. Big P is moving. But yeah, look at this. Look how cool that is. Might be uh, rain checking that walk for a little while, yeah? Maybe a little bit. Maybe a little bit. There's a saying in Shetland, and I think most places where the weather is unpredictable. If you don't like the weather, just wait 15 minutes. So I think that's what we do, what we'll do. Won't be bad. Cheers, mate. Thanks. All wrapped up, it's a bit wild out there. There is a loop that you could do as a walk. I think I'm gonna go do that but Joe's just gonna come out and look at the first cliffs and then come back here and stay warm. She might have the right idea, but we'll see how far I get on this walk. was formed by volcanic eruption 350 million years ago and the seas have kind of carved it even, even more into kind of like this broken landscape. It's amazing, it's honestly, you can, especially on a day like today with the rough seas, me and Joe were just saying, you can really kind of appreciate the power and also the terrifying, just how scary the sea must be. Not looking good, is it, Frank? Very windy. So 
ice cold. I think we're gonna go. Oh my god, I've locked her out. <laughs> Quick gear! Oh my god! Nice hair! <laughs> In the face with the back. No, he's alright. It's freezing out there. Oh, you would really take us to do a hike, Dane. Not hiking weather. Driving and looking at things weather, I think. Oh, God, I forgot the zoomies. <laughs> Just think of the zoomies. Yeah, they did. <laughs> alright, we've just driven a little bit further back down Shetland towards Lyric so we can get our ferry, but there's two very important things that we've stopped our van for. Little horses and some cake sold via an honesty box. Check this out. We've got in the cake fridge, Joe. Gluten free vegan tiffin. Oh, I want that. Can we get that? Oh my God. I think we're going to end our Shetland trip here, eating some cake, staring at some Shetland pony ponies. This has been an awesome week. Hope you've enjoyed watching it. And in about five hours, we'll be boarding our ferry to the Orkney Islands. Um, so yeah, really excited about that. I've loved our time in Shetland. I'll probably be writing a blog by the time this video is out as well. So check that out on our website. Follow us on Instagram. And if you've liked this video, give it a like and maybe even subscribe. Um, and we'll catch you on the next adventure. See ya.